Wish Tree, Chapter 32. The years passed. Oh, I had to get myself back into the story. Sorry. He's talking about Maeve, that little Irish girl from earlier in the story. The years passed and Maeve, Maeve became as connected to the neighborhood as I was. Even as newcomers from other lands added their music and food and language to our little part of the world. No matter where people were from, Maeve cared for them as best she could. I grew tougher, my older limbs less pliable, meaning less bendy, my shadow longer, more trees and shrubs joined me, but there was plenty of sun for all of us and we never wanted for water, meaning they always had enough. I'd hosted many families by then, mice and chipmunks in particular. My closest confidant was a young gray squirrel named Squibbles. All squirrel names begin with the letters S-Q-U at Squibbles. Squibbles was especially fond of Maeve, who often fed the little squirrel table scraps. Privately, Squibbles and I worried about Maeve. Along the way, Maeve had been a, Maeve had seen a suitor or two, but nothing much came of those flirtations. She had friends aplenty, so she had a lot of friends, and work to do from dusk till dawn. Still, she seemed lonely. Sometimes Maeve would sit on the porch step, watching happy families stroll past, and her eyes would well up with tears. At night, she'd gaze out an open upper upstairs window, and her sighs would float to us on the breeze, melancholy as the call of the morning dove. So she really wants to have, like, get married and have a family. Often Maeve would sit at the base of my trunk and write in her journal. Now and then she'd read passages aloud. She spoke about the Irish countryside fading into fog. She spoke about her family she'd lost. She spoke, spoke about her secret hopes and fears and longings. She had love to give and no one to give it to. Maeve adored early mornings when the world was bathed in mist and sun was still a promise. She would lean against my truck, my trunk and close her eyes and hum a tune from her childhood. One day, the first day of May, Maeve joined me at dawn. To my surprise, she reached up to my lowest bow, like my lowest branch, and gently tied a scrap of blue striped fabric in a careful knot. I wish, she whispered, for someone to love with all my heart. That was my first wish, and the beginning of many more. Chapter 33 As the weeks passed, the piece of fabric on my branch drew many comments. Some of the folks in their neighborhood, the ones from Ireland, would nod knowingly and smile. Remember this tradition came from Ireland? To them, Maeve would simply say in her lilting voice, that's my raggy tree. She's not a hawthorn, but she'll do just fine. People who'd come here from other lands, and there were many of them, would frown at the rag or even reach up and remove it. Maeve would warn, don't you be touching my wish now? patiently again and again she would explain how in her home in her old home leaving wishes on a raggy tree was a time-honored tradition now and then people would ask Maeve what she'd wished for she'd tell them the truth with a sigh and a wry smile nothing much just someone to love with all my heart nothing much at all sometimes people would laugh sometimes they'd roll their eyes a wish on a rag won't bring you love dearie they would say but usually people gave Maeve a kind smile, a squeeze on the arm, a knowing nod, and then they too would ask if they could add their own wish. 34. Another year passed. As May neared, I found myself hosting more scraps of fabric than budding leaves. Squibbles tried to steal a few fabric strips to line his dray, so probably his, the nest, the nest made of leaves and twigs high in one of my forked branches. Yeah, Larry Wade pointed those out. I explained that he'd have to stick with moss and pine needles until the 1st of May. Wishes, according to Maeve, could not be touched until after May Day. Then the ones that weren't carried off with the wind or dragged to the ground by the rain could be removed by people or by enterprising squirrels. I suspected she made up that rule for my benefit so I could grow unfettered, meaning, you know, not tied down, without the weight of wet rags dragging me down. Just before the 1st of May, a young woman approached me. She had dark wavy hair and a tattered gray coat. In her arms was a wrapped bundle. Psst, Squibbles whist, whispered to me. Here comes another wish, Red. But Squibbles was wrong. There was no wish. 
Swiftly, but with great care, the girl placed her bundle in my hollow. What do you suppose is in there? A thank you for Maeve, I realized. A loaf of bread, perhaps? The girl had probably been one of her patients. She, had, she was gone as quickly as she come, like a hummingbird, I thought. Then, there then, not there. There then, not there, like a gust of wind. Sorry, I didn't read that well.